Ratchet and Clank, a series beloved for its gorgeous level designs, hilarious characters, and of course, the weapons. The series has over 150 iconic guns, and they do everything. They go boom, they talk, they suck, create tornadoes, shoot lava, rip the fabric of space-time, turn robots into sheep, fire bees, and even make it Christmas. And in this speedrun, we won't be using any of them. Welcome to Ratchet 2 Wrench Only, where we save the galaxy using only the wrench, Ratchet's default melee weapon. In a game meant to be beaten with a plasma rifle or a machine gun that shoots saw blades, it's a special challenge to stick to a wrench, which only does what a wrench normally does, tighten bolts and bonk noggins. This needlessly difficult category is one of my absolute favorites, and I want to share all the reasons I fell in love with it. We start off side flipping through Eranos because it's slightly faster than walking. For combat, all we have are hyper strikes, swings, and throws. I'm zipping through the level on an original American PlayStation 2 copy of the game. Every other version is slower. Either you can't move as quickly, or the movement got patched out, making Wrench only a true retro gaming experience. Next up, Planet Uzla. Oh look, our first boss! Instead of fighting the boss, we jump past him, barely landing on the other side. We head into the Megacorp shop and vibe like crazy with one of my favorite songs in the game. Rather than go all the way through the shop, we can side flip through the wall and hyper strike to activate the final checkpoint, die, and respawn at the end of the level. On Wupash Nebula, we need to destroy two waves of spaceships. It may look like I'm shooting lasers and missiles, but don't worry, this ship fires wrenches, so the run is still valid. Oh my gosh, what is that? It's the subscribe button! Hit it, Ratchet, hit it! Whew, that was close. After Wupash, we clear Magtar Gladiator Arena. Wait a minute, something is missing. Oh, Clank. We need to rescue him, so we go to Endaco. We start off with Crane Skip, which is another cool trick you can do with the wrench. When Ratchet takes damage, there's a very narrow window where you can still do a melee attack. This puts Ratchet in a grounded state that lets us double jump, which we do to get up here and grab the ledge, saving 45 seconds. Then, it's just a matter of getting past a simple children's puzzle and freeing Clank from this, uh, table. Now normally there's this long, annoying clank section that takes several minutes, but I want to show you something really cool. Watch this. These are called camera clips. If we line Clank up here in the corner, we can use the game's camera, the thing that you use to look around, to push him through the wall. Ratchet speedrunners have known that the camera has had collision for years, but this use for it was found just this year in 2022, with a combined effort of five different runners. It just goes to show that after 20 years, the game's still getting faster. We do another camera clip here, and then Ratchet and Clank leave and Daco together. Our next trick is called Maktar 2 Skip. We can now long jump with Clank's thruster pack, and then switch to the helipack and long jump again right as Ratchet's feet touch the ground. You know, now that I think about it, we're not really skipping Magtar 2 because we're already here. Anyway, Pack Swap Momentum is a wildly powerful tool in this category. It allows us to do crazy things like this. God, that's sick. On to Barlow, a vast, sweeping mountain range in the clouds, begging to be explored. It presents the player the opportunity to write their own epic to traverse dangerous landscapes, to conquer Herculean challenges. <laughs> we skip this level by high jumping at some rocks. Now we grab some extra health on Felton. That's a surprise tool that can help us later. And move on to Notak. After some quick platforming through the planet, we come up on one of the coolest tricks in the run. There's a giant invisible slope in this building, which we can climb if we do a couple things super precisely. First, we cancel a glide right before touching the slope. Then, we start double jumping. Finally, and this is the balancing act, you have to make sure that the analog stick is totally neutral whenever you're about to jump again. All of this takes us to the end of the level. This trick is a lot harder than it looks. I mess it up so often that I even screwed it up in the run where I got world record. After stealing some ship upgrades from Slim Cognito, it's time for Siberius. Siberius in Wrench Only is intricate and unforgiving. We take out enemies at the beginning to get our experience bar almost, but not quite full enough to level up. Then we go out of bounds and traverse a series of invisible platforms to get to the boss, skipping a very long train sequence. But before we fight the boss, we have to throw Ratchet into the icy abyss 14 times. In the early 2000s, there weren't many games that had built-in difficulty settings. So, to make games accessible to little kids, developers had to get a bit creative. For this game, 
game, Insomniac used a concept called act tuning. The game is divided up into different acts, which are designed to make themselves a little easier every time the player fails. So, this boss starts with a little less health each time you die against her. And 14 deaths is perfect. It's just enough deaths to make her weak enough to kill with your wrench, but not so many deaths that it takes forever to set up. Think of act tuning as the game meeting you halfway. The game doesn't want you to fail. It's kind in that way. And sometimes, it's nice to settle into something for a long time and appreciate its depth. All the various ways it can be transformed, understood, and re-understood, even if it's possible to move on. That's what it is to speedrun a game like this. A game that is older than some of the people watching this video about it. Maybe it's about proving that I'm the best, the most precise, the fastest, and maybe it's about repaying the game's small kindness. Oh great, we're done. After going to Brazil 14 times, we can fight the thief. The key is positioning. We want to stand exactly close enough that we hit her twice with the wrench toss. Once on the throw, and once as it flies back. But we don't want to get so close that she flies away. At half health, she'll start shooting these mines. That's why we picked up some extra health earlier on Felton. That gave us barely enough health to survive one blast. Once she's down to a quarter health, we reveal the ace up our sleeve. She spawns these robots to gank Ratchet's weasel ass, but they get caught in the friendly fire of the turrets on the ground. Ratchet gets credit for doing this, despite doing none of the work. Because we were sure to get our EXP bar just up to the point of leveling up, this little bit of experience pushes it over the edge, generating this cool explosion which finishes off the boss. Huge shoutouts to Mantodia for coming up with this madcap scheme of a strategy. Now past the Gauntlet of Siberius, we move on to Tabora. Use rock to break glass to get wrench to break glass to get rock. Where we find a wrench upgrade. Returning to Indaco, we have some business with this guy. We zoom through the level and blow him up with ease using our sweet upgraded wrench. Once he's out of the way, we pick up our prize. Hey, my old swing shot and grind boots. Dabo is a wild planet. We have this wacky out of bounds sequence before we swing shot across the whole dang ocean to get to the giant clank fight. It looks simple, but the giant clank fight is super precise. We have to jump on this big fucker over and over to keep him stun locked or whatever. After the giant clank fight, we head over to Joba to win the charge boots in a motorcycle race. If you thought any of the stuff you've seen so far was cool, you have no idea. The charge boots change everything. Turns out, it's actually illegal to go this fast, so Ratchet and Clank get thrown in jail here on Eranos. You're supposed to break out by swapping between Clank and Ratchet a few times to overcome the prison security, but we have other plans. We blitz through the first Clank section by clipping through these doors, then skip the Ratchet section outright by using a camera clip to push Clank into this grate. Clank is now further forward than the game expects, so it assumes you've done the Ratchet sections and we can head straight to the final Clank lane. From there, another camera clip gets us outside. Thanks for the help, Ratchet. Feel free to chip in next time. Saving and loading at this point lets us play as Ratchet once again, and we end the level by camera clipping through this wall, high jumping up this thin surface, and double jump hyper striking to the end of the level. Snivelak is known for having the worst boss fight in the entire 16 game series. It's this guy again. Except this time, he's in a giant freaking robot. Casually, you have to go from turret to turret shooting him for tiny ticks of damage for about 15 straight minutes while he fires these obnoxious little kamikaze drones at you. <laughs> Insomniac, I forgive you, and I'm so glad you've learned from this. Thankfully, it's much faster wrench only. We manipulate the boss so he's locked in place over this bridge and then walk directly into his big robot gooch. This tricks him into using his own eye lasers to give himself a late life circumcision that understandably takes him out. This takes about one minute rather than the normal 15. And coming up on the last few planets, I'm gonna let this movement speak for itself. These enemies prevent us from camera clipping, so they've gotta go. 
These are swing shot infinite jumps. The swing shot latches onto the bridge in front of Ratchet, but by canceling the animation with the wrench swing, I can double jump again and again. Now we're in the final fight, the mutant protopet. This enemy is a tank. Casual players will remember dumping all their ammo into this thing and barely leaving a dent. The Actune 20 times, which reduces the boss's health to half. While this process takes about two minutes, it's still significantly faster than trying to fight this monster head on. We break this crate to get the protopet to start puking other smaller protopets. He's programmed to keep vomiting these midi pets until there are a certain amount of them on the platform. But, with some precise positioning, we can trick him into yakking them into the void, so he's stuck doing this infinitely while we hit him. Once he's lost a third of his health, it's on to phase two, where mean robots appear to make things much harder. While we dodge the robots who, by the way, can kill us in two hits, we check to see whether the game will bless us with another crate or curse us with a tractor ball. If it's a tractor ball, he'll swallow it and we can get him to shoot fireballs at himself, which is precise, luck-based, and still requires us to dodge enemy fire. But if it's another crate, we can get him locked back into barfing little protopets again. Phase 3 is the same, but you have to dodge these tanks as well as the robots and the protopet itself. Then it's another roulette spin, crate or tractor ball. The random spawns in this fight are nerve-wracking because they're completely out of your hands. But sometimes the stars align, like in this run which I got on June 21st, 2022. Jesus fuck! Holy shit dude! Oh my god! 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 11 seconds is where my record stands as of the creation of this video. I hope you can all see why I find this category so thrilling. From weird out of bounds, to mind-blowing movement, to bosses that require the most creative solutions you can think of just to make them possible. Wrench only has everything. While this is by no means a run I would recommend for beginners, if you dare to take on the challenge with me, you'll find that Wrench only continues to be a playground for new discoveries. With the category so close to sub one hour, I'm going to keep pushing until it becomes possible. You're welcome to watch the journey over on my Twitch stream, where I run this and many other amazing categories almost every single day. You can also find the full, unedited world record run linked in the description below. Shoutouts to all my patrons over on Patreon, you all make these videos possible. When you come over to play, you can use the good controller. Thanks for watching.